Live from the 22 News Studios, this is a Decision 2014 special program. Today, a debate with candidates for the 4th Hampton District Massachusetts House seat. And now, here's Rich Tedemer. Good afternoon, 22 News is working for you this week as we let the candidates that you'll see on the ballot next Tuesday debate the issues today. Today, it's the candidates running for the Massachusetts House seat in the 4th Hamden District. It's a rematch of an April special election to fill the seat. Winner and Democrat John Velas is challenged by Republican Dan Alley. This is a Lincoln Douglas style debate where the candidates will ask each other the questions and with time for answers and rebuttal. First, each candidate will get one minute for an opening statement. And Dan Alley, you go first. Well, thank you, Channel 22. Uh, good morning, John. Uh, and everyone watching at home. Um, I am concerned about the future we are leaving our children, the quality of their education, and the lack of economic opportunities. I am concerned about the, uh, what the politicians are doing at every level of government and the direction our state and our economy is heading. My name is Dan Alley. I'm a father, grandfather, Army veteran, small business owner, and city councilor. Massachusetts does not have a spending uh, a revenue problem. We have a spending and a priority problem. I'm aware of how cuts in local aid, road, and education funding have led to increased property taxes, cuts in services, impact the daily lives of people, businesses, and Westfield City employees. If elected state rep, I will give up my job, remain on the city council for the additional year, committed to holding the line on property taxes. John Velas, your opening statement, please. Thank you, Rich, and I want to thank Channel 22 News and everyone watching back at home. When I first decided that I was going to run for state representative almost a year ago, I made a pledge to the people of Westfield. And that pledge was that I wasn't going to consider in anything I did party politics. The only thing that I was going to consider every single vote that I took is what's in the best interest of Westfield. Not what would a Democrat do, not what would a Republican do, but how does this affect Westfield? And I'm happy to report that I have done exactly what I said I was going to do. I have accumulated a voting record that makes me, if not the most independent, one of the most independent state representatives in all of Massachusetts. And I'm very proud of keeping that promise to the people of Westfield. I also want to bring up that Westfield with me as their state representative, we have a voice a voice that can bring back vital resources to the city of Westfield at a time when the cities just don't have them. Thank you very much. Okay, candidates, once again, a reminder, this is a Lincoln-Douglas-style debate where each candidate will get 30 seconds to ask a question, then 60 seconds to answer, and 30 seconds for rebuttal. And starting off with our questions first is Representative John Velas. John? Thank you very much. Dan, the first campaign over and over again, you in mailer and in debate, you you tried to portray me as a typical tax and spend liberal, someone who was going to go down to Boston, vote to increase taxes, when in fact not only have I voted against every tax, I have also voted to roll back taxes. Are you prepared today to tell the people of Westfield that you were wrong on my position on taxes and what I would do? Well, John, I never called you a tax and spend uh, liberal um, at all, um, and so I don't know what you're referring to. Um, you know, you call yourself one of the most independent uh, members of the House, but you do vote with the, uh, the Speaker of the House about 87% of the time. So um, I, don't, I don't ever remember sending out anything that's ever said that. Rebuttal? Over and over again, the first campaign, you said that I, you sent it in mailers that I would go down to Boston and raise taxes. I have not done that. I have voted against every tax that's come up and I have voted to roll back taxes. Okay, that, well, that election is over. All right. But that's what you said I would do when I went down to Boston. I've done the exact opposite. So I'm just asking you, are you prepared to say that what you portrayed as far as how I would vote on taxes is wrong? I would agree, you know, yeah, I would definitely want to correct those statements uh, to that. All right, you. Dan, it's time, it's time for your first question, Dan, All right, please. Thank you. But John, you do call yourself one of the most independent members of the House. And you have been in legislative session for a few months, mm -hmm. yet you vote with the Speaker of the House about 87% of the time. Now, in the House, members uh, can stand up to call for a roll call vote. How many times, and many times, uh, Democrats will not stand up for a roll call vote? 
What votes have you stood up for or with the Republicans to call for a roll call vote? Well, just initially to answer your first question, the 87% voting with the Speaker is a completely misleading figure. What happens, I, obviously I was a state representative from April 16th till the end of July. And during that time period, on actual votes, partisan votes, without exception, the, probably the most independent state representative in all of Massachusetts. What tends to skew that is the last couple of days while we're in Boston is we take about 100, we took probably about 100 to 200 votes, land takings, things of that nature that are virtually unanimous. So that kind of skews that number. Um, so it's nowhere near 80% in terms of votes on partisan issues, taxes, local aid, stuff of that nature. It, it, well, in fact, I would venture to say that I've probably voted across party lines more with minority leader Bradley Jones on the partisan votes that we've taken. As far as the roll call votes, I don't recall standing up and taking any roll call votes, but I don't v really view that to be the issue. The issue is whether or not I've crossed party lines, and I've done that more than any other state representative. Rebuttal. Westfield has been blessed with 40 years of hardworking, independent representation in Boston. Two of our representatives have become judges, two have become state senators, one was a House Minority Leader and candidate for governor in U.S. Congress. If elected, I will continue that same tradition of hard work, independent representation, and constituency service for the people of Westfield. I will stand for roll call votes so the people of all of Massachusetts will know how their legislators are voting. John Velas, your next question, please. Yes, just similar to the first question, Dan. One of the things that you also said over and over again, in fact, you can identify exactly where you said this at our first senior center debate, is that if John Velas is elected, he will go down to Boston and vote in lockstep with the majority party. Not only have I not done that, in fact, I've done the exact opposite. And if you had to tally my votes, I have voted more with the other party. So again, I asked you, Dan, here today, are you willing to tell the people of Westfield and admit that you are wrong in terms of whether or not I would vote with my party? Okay, well, there you go again, John. Um, that election is over, and we're moving on to a new election, and this is the general election. As you know, that was a 12-week uh, campaign, uh, and uh, so, you know, you refused to commit to not raising taxes. You never signed the No News Taxes Pledge that the citizens for limited taxation. You were endorsed by the Mass Teachers Association. Um, and it's unbelievable that you can say that you won't do those things on a questionnaire and a group still endorse you. So um, that doesn't make much sense to me, but. Um. Rebuttal. Dan, the no new tax pledge, uh, questionnaires are questionnaires. You know, you could make an argument. You can fill out all the questionnaires you want. Let's talk about my votes and what I have done. Every single tax vote that has come up since I've been your state representative, I have voted against. I, quite frankly, I don't care about questionnaires. I care about what I did in Boston. And in Boston, I voted against taxes, plain and simple. I, and I would also say that by saying that what I did before, th that was what you said in the campaign about how I would vote when I got to Boston. Now I have a voting record. Time, Mr. Velas. Thank you. Dan, your next question, please. Common Core Standards are a federal, one-size-fits-all testing regimen. There were no public hearings. Its, implement, its implementation was not state-led and rushed through to become a requirement for race-to-the-top funding. You voted for Massachusetts to join Common Core. Do you believe standardized testing accurately reflects a, a student's competence in a subject? And please explain why you voted uh, in favor of Common Core. In, in fact, thank you, Dan, because that was one of my questions. This is all stems from a mailer that Mr. Alley sent out about I voted to impose Common Core. So thank you, and I want to clarify this. I never, I repeat, never voted to impose Common Core in the state of Massachusetts. There was never a legislative vote on Common Core in Massachusetts. As to whether or not I believe in standardized testing, I have serious, serious problems with that. I am a product of the public schools, and as I've said quite frequently, if it weren't for several teachers in the Westfield Public Schools, forget about being your state representative, I wouldn't be a graduate of high school. So to suggest I voted for Common Core is outright disingenuous and misleading. I voted for an amendment against defunding a program on the spot and sending it to a study. 
I never voted to impose Common Core, and that's disingenuous and misleading to the people of Westfield. As far as standardized text, no, I don't. What's happening in Massachusetts schools, teaching to the test is awful. Students need to be treated like individuals, not data. Rebuttal. I will vote to repeal and defund Common Core. I believe everyone learns at different ways and different paces. Decisions about education should be in the hands of parents, teachers, and local school committees, not in the hands of bureaucrats, administrators, or the federal government. Teachers should be allowed to use their creativity and passion to reach and teach students and have the freedom to adjust to a student's needs. The federal government is out of money, and the cost to implement Common Core will take valuable resources away from school budgets. Representative Velas, your next question, please. Dan, throughout the course of this campaign, unfortunately, la last campaign in this campaign, you've sent out a series of misleading mailers, distorting my record, what I voted on, but one of them is particularly remarkable to me. Uh, according to your mailer, you say that I voted to increase the amount that unions could give to $15,000, when in fact that was part of the Super PAC disclosure bill, a bill that increases transparency of politics, ensures that super PACs disclose money that they're giving, would you have voted against that super PAC bill? You voted against the, the Ryan Fatman Amendment that would have changed that. Okay? Um, I think it's, it's unfair that unions can donate up to $15,000 to a candidate when individuals are limited to $500 and small comp companies can't even donate a single dime. So I would have supported the Fatman Amendment, which would have changed that. Um, the law next year goes to, uh, allows individuals to donate up to $1,000. Um. Rebuttal. So would you vote, my question was, would you have voted for the Super PAC bill? There is no such thing as a perfect law. The allowing unions to give $15,000 was part of a bill that was supported overwhelmingly, which has the effect of cleaning up elections getting rid of dirty politics. It's a bill that was supported not only by myself, it was a bill supported not only by myself, 39 to 1 in the Senate, Senator Hummison voted for it, Nick Baldega voted for it, it enjoyed overwhelming bipartisan support, and it's, you, the fact that you won't answer that question is troubling by to all, me. By, on, by incumbents. All right, Dan, time for your question, please. The state has reinstated the tolls on the Mass Pike. If re-elected, would you introduce legislation in January to remove the, tool, the tolls from the western end of the Mass Pike, also to repeal automatic gas taxes, restore local aid, increase funding to the cities for road maintenance, and obtain a waiver for the state to allow Westfield to operate our own business improvement district? Local aid, property taxes, I've already voted on it. So you know how I'm going to vote on that. I'm going to do everything in my power to get property taxes lowered in the city of Westfield. I've already voted on several of those things. The registry, absolutely. In fact, I won't wait till January. The registry fees, the tolls, all of that. We are still struggling to recover from the Great Recession of 2008. I will absolutely, I'll do it on November 15th if you want me to, the registry, the tolls, they have to go. Local aid, I've already voted on it. I, that's another example of me crossing party lines well, to vote. I would introduce legislation. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely will file. That's what I'm talking about. Right. I will file legislation well before January. Absolutely. Including a waiver for the uh, business improvement? District. Absolutely. Rebuttal? No, that, that, would, that would be great. Um, I think one of the biggest things I'm accomplishing is uh, introducing these things and getting these things moving forward. Um, the Mass Pike was paid for many years ago and several times over. Um, it's a burden on people in Western Massachusetts. Time and time again, legislators down in Boston have broken their promise to the people of Massachusetts to take down the tolls, which are unnecessary and a burden. The money goes to pork laden projects in Boston. The Unfortunately, we're out of time right now, Mr. Alley, but we'll continue in just a minute. In fact, we're going to take a short two-minute break, and then more questions for the candidates running for the 4th Hamden District and the State House seat. You're watching 22 News.
Welcome back to the debate between the candidates running for the state house seat in the 4th Hamden District. Democrat Representative John Velas is being challenged by Republican Dan Alley. They're in the middle of a Lincoln-Douglas style debate where the candidates ask each other the questions with time for answers and rebuttal. Coming up with the next question is Representative John Velas. Thank you, Rich. Dan, yesterday the, the residents of Westfield received another misleading, disingenuous mailer in the mail. Aside from saying we can't afford Rep. John Velas, it says that Beacon Hill has cut local aid, leading to higher property taxes, cutting phones for road repair, increased the gas tax automatically. These are all things that I have been on record saying that I am against. I have voted to increase local aid. I have voted for property tax relief. I am just as against the gas tax as you are. So I ask you, even if this isn't sent from you, if it's sent by you in the form of an in-kind contribution, why are you misleading the voters of Westfield with this stuff when you most certainly know it's not my position? Dan? Okay, yeah, thank you, Rich. That card clearly states that those are things that Beacon Hill has done. People of Westfield know that you went to Boston in April, mid-April. Okay, and then the only thing that it's just a position is that it's mentioning that you vote with the speaker 87% of the time. So at no point is it trying to say that you did these things. It clearly states that that's, and it was a card from the Massachusetts uh, State Committee, but, but that's things that Boston has done. And I think there's a blue pig on it with, uh, it says state government. That's right. Okay, so, you know, that's an image with some copy. It, at no point does it say that John Velas did those things. Okay, but it, it, it's very misleading in that the impression could be given that because Beacon Hill has done this, I am the state representative, that I also have suggested those policies when nothing could be the further from the tr truth. I am leading the fight on all of these. That's what makes it so ironic. And again, I just want to reiterate that that 87% voting with the seat speaker is skewed. I am without a doubt, based on my votes and my record, if not the most independent, one of the most independent state representatives in Massachusetts, and that's irrefutable. Dan Alley, your next question, please. Thank you, Rich. I worked for 14 months to repeal automatic gas tax hikes. We were the all first all-volunteer group to successfully put a question on the statewide ballot since 1991. I have been endorsed by the Tank the Gas Tax PAC and received their first Hero Award for collecting 1,100 signatures. I published articles and placed cities uh, signs all of the sign. You told the Springfield Re Republican that you were leading the charge and if re-elected pledged to fight to repeal automatic gas taxes. Please tell us what you've done to lead the charge since September of 2013 to repeal automatic gas tax hikes. Well first and foremost I have said that I'm going to, I've told people how I'm going to vote. I'm absolutely going to be voting to repeal the gas tax. Every single door that I knock on in the city of Westfield, I advise people when they ask me that in my humble opinion, the gas tax needs to be repealed. I believe it to be taxation without representation that is fundamentally unfair to the people of Western Massachusetts. We drive more. Those transportation projects are in Boston. We're not going to reap the benefits of them. So I don't know what else I can do other than getting on the roof of Channel 22 and screaming I'm against the gas tax. But you had a specific question. I've announced it in every public forum that I can that I'm against it. I have donated to tank the gas tax, and every single person from Westfield and elsewhere, I have said that the gas tax should be repealed. I don't know what else I can do. And, if, and I've taken it a step further. When elected, I will file, if it, assuming it isn't repealed, I will file legislation to repeal the gas tax. Our group collected 146,000 signatures. John Veal has failed to even sign the petition twice, last year and this year. He has not helped or put a single sign in the ground. When we started col uh, collecting signatures, almost no one knew about it. Had we not put question one on the ballot, this taxing mechanism would have hung around for years and ended up on other products before people started asking, when did our taxes start increasing based on the consumer price index, rather than our legislators <coughs> voting on it? The answer would have been the summer of 2013, but nobody would have remembered that. Time, Dan. Thank you. John Velas, your next question, please. Dan, again, there have been a series of misleading mailers, both last campaign and this campaign. A and now I have something that, quite frankly, was mind-boggling to me. A few days ago, you wrote a letter to the editor that was published in The Republican that I have here. And you talk about your endorsements, who has endorsed you. And one of the organizations you mention 
is GOAL, the Gun Owners Action League. Dan, I don't want to say that's an outright lie, but it is absolutely misleading. I have in front of me here today the Gun Owners Action League letter endorsing me in this race. Question, John? Why are you misleading, again, the people of Westfield? Well, John, there you go again. I am not misleading voters. You received an A-plus rating from Gold. I was endorsed in the special election and have received 100%. And we, I have emails back to and forth to the group because you were endorsed or got a green uh, indicator because you're the incumbent. I emailed Goal on several occasions. There's only a couple of places where we uh, use the term uh, being endorsed by, because they never, frankly, came back to me and said, you know, we endorse incumbent. So I received a 100% rating from Goal. You have an A+, plus. I don't know the difference. And as an incumbent, and I understand this perfectly well, and we, we worked very hard to, uh, to reach Goal, um, and I think they were kind of, uh, I don't know, hard pressed or just embarrassed to like say, no, Danny, we, we endorsed you when it was an open race, and now, so that explains that, and uh, I have all the emails, and I'd be more than happy to, uh, to show you, but that, that's a misunderstanding or miscommunication. Nothing you said responds to what I said. You wrote a letter all, to the responds. editor, to the people of Westfield, to the people of Western Massachusetts, saying you were endorsed by Goal. It I was. have the letter, Goal endorses John Velas for state representative. And they didn't send me a letter that said Goal John endorses John Velas for state representative. Dan, you're, you're not being candid here. I, I was being, endorsed, being very candid. you were endorsed in the special election, I was endorsed this time. I know, and they it's don't It's plain send, and simple. Well, I have an A plus rating, and I have a letter right here, John Velas is the endorsed candidate, and encouraging all members to support well, me. Well, I didn't get a letter that said that. Right, that's only time, the Dan, it's your turn for your question. Endorsed. We still your have more question. questions? Your question. Okay. Um, all right, so, all right, I'm sorry. I have been endorsed by every pro family, pro business, and pro taxpayer group in the state, including Citizens for Limited Taxation, the author of Proposition Two and a Half. You received a 50% rating from CLT. Can you explain why you received such a low rating from one of the largest taxpayer watchdog groups in Massachusetts? I want to be very clear here. I have my policy from day one. I don't care about questionnaires. I am a sitting state representative who, forget about a questionnaire which has absolutely no effect whatsoever. Let's talk about my votes, what I've done as a state representative. I have voted not only against every tax, I have voted to roll back taxes. It is, virt it is impossible to be more fiscally conservative than me. So, Dan, with the utmost respect, you can tout all the questionnaires you want, but let's talk about the only thing that matters here, my record and what I have voted on, real life consequences, and my voting record speaks loud and clear. You can't be any more independent than me, you can't be any more fiscally conservative than me, and I am leading that charge in the House of Representatives. Rebuttal. John, in the last election, you did not even have an issues button uh, or issues on your website until I brought it up on March 15th, and by Sunday you had thrown something up. Okay? I promised the people of Westfield uh, in writing that I will not vote to raise their taxes. You still have not mentioned why CLT gave you a 50% rating. Um, I've been endorsed by every pro-business and pro-taxpayer group in the <coughs> state, including New Jobs from Massachusetts, the National Federation of Independent Businesses, Mass Fiscal Alliance, and Citizens for Limited Taxation. That's time, gentlemen, and it's time now for closing statements. Each candidate will get one minute for a closing statement, and Representative John Veals will go first. John? Thank you, Rich. Thank you, News, Ch 20, uh, News Station 22. Th there's an old saying, if something ain't broke, don't fix it. I have been in office for a very short time period, and look what I've accomplished. I have a, I have a voting record, again, that makes me, if not the most independent, one of the most independent state representatives who doesn't take into consideration partisan politics. That's what's wrong today, looking through votes through the prism of the Democratic answer, the Republican answer. The only thing I consider is what is in the best interest of Westfield. Nothing more, nothing less, and that's why my voting record is what it is. The other reason is look at the voice that Westfield now has with me as the state representative. I've brought back $100,000 to Noble Hospital, $50,000 to the Senior Center, 
$15,000 to Westfield Weekend and stimulate businesses. This is a clear choice, folks. We have an independent representative as well of a voice, and a voice matters. That being said, I respectfully and humbly request your vote next Tuesday on November 4th. Thank you so much. Dan Alley, your closing statement, please. Well, thank you, Rich, and thank you, John. I listened and heard the concerns of seniors, residents, business owners, and city employees. I will fight to maintain Massachusetts' high standards in education, health care, training for our police and firefighters, and against lower federal standards, including our first-in-the-nation uh, highway safety ranking. I placed three questions on the ballot. Vote yes to repeal automatic gas tax increases, restore local aid, and increase funding to cities for road maintenance. My name is Dan Alley, and I'm running to be your state representative. We come into this world naked, and we leave naked. It is what we leave behind that really matters. I ask for your consideration and your vote on November 4th. Thank you. God bless. Thanks, gentlemen. And that concludes our look at the candidates running for the state house seat in the 4th Hamden District. Our thanks to John Velas and Dan Alley for participating today. As they mentioned, Election Day is coming up on Tuesday, November 4th. If you missed any of today's debate, you can watch it again on WWLP.com. I'm Rich Tatimer. Thanks for joining us and have a good afternoon.